as a child I wanted to play like any other kids but I never had the chance to do that. Can you imagine being sold for beer and a few grand? Let alone being sold, but being sold by your aunt who was supposed to protect you. She really sold me now to someone and she earned around uh, 40,000. This woman was sold for beer and 40,000 Kenyan shillings to men who defied her. At some point, she questioned her existence in this world, as all she could see was troubles and challenges. From being sold by her aunt to being kidnapped for a week to going to jail, this mother of two has been through it all. She no meaning of life and lost hope. We are in Kenya, a country with mysterious and extraordinary stories. My name is Doreen Mora. I was born in 1993, where mom left for some reasons. After her mother's departure, she spent two years living with her grandmother, and later her aunt came and brought what was supposedly a good idea. She wanted to take her to school, and everyone agreed with her, but upon reaching at her house, it turned out that she had other ideas. She turned her into a housemaid, doing each and every home activity, plus some activities the aunt could not manage doing. I was like working as a, as a house help at first. Then uh, as life went by, she was like now selling me to men. After turning 10, the aunt found ways of using her for her own benefits, selling her to men who would, of course, sleep with her. And she was no one to say no from one man to the other. That was a business that required no capital and it was booming because by then, men were always ready to have fun on the young girl by then. And eventually, she really sold me now to someone and she earned around uh, 40000 Jerry and 40 jerry cans of jalla. Yes, at the same time. Is, uh, mm. As if that wasn't enough, the aunt finally had another indecent idea of selling her when she had between 12 and 13 years. And 40,000 Kenyan shillings was enough for the aunt to sell her niece. From there, she started experiencing a very difficult life. It wasn't easy. It was really tough because at that time, I was a babysitter in the family. Life I lived with the person who had bought me was strange. It was a difficult task for me to take care of young kids, toddlers. Remember, I was also a kid and I was about to turn 13. I had to look after one young boy and another old woman until when the old woman died. Time came and the woman who had bought me also died and it looked like my time there was coming to an end. As a child, I wanted to play like any other kids, but I never had the chance to do that. She never knew what was going to happen next. She was left somehow confused with no direction. And since she was also young, it could be difficult for her to remember all the way back to her grandma. She waited till nighttime when they took her somewhere. So my whole childhood was destroyed. They started suggesting taking me to Mombasa, and since Mombasa is a coastal city to me, it was a dream working and living in Mombasa. But shortly before we took our journey, my mother came looking for me and took me to Nakuru town. Mom saved me now after like uh, two years of living with the people. <sighs> I came back and started schooling. So at that time I was like, 13. Lucky for her, she was taken to school and started from primary 3 until primary 6 when a tragedy happened. And that is one of her worst days ever as far as she can remember. I was coming from school at that time. It was around 6 in the evening. I was coming from school and I met three men who asked me for direction. I tried directing them to the chief of the village whom they wanted and requested me to take them there. As any young and obedient child, it was easy, and I felt I would be supporting them, not knowing that it was a trap. They pretended not to understand because they had different intentions. So I, I was naive, like I can call it, because I agreed to take them personally. It's hard to explain what happened next, as I found myself in a house that looked as if it was not a home. The house was locked. And they said, if you want to shout and make noise, do it. 
but know that there is no one, not even a single person, who will hear you. She started screaming, but all in vain. There was no one to help her, and she calmed down, kept quiet, and those men did whatever they wanted. And Doreen spent there a whole week. After some time, the three men thought of taking her to a place she could never recognize and opted not to take her back to Nakuru, but Nairobi. Left at night, they had a cab. You see, I looked young, and by then I was actually young. So when they took me to Nairobi, they imagined that I would get lost and start wandering on streets like other homeless street children. They made sure she was asleep, took her and threw her to a place called Donham in Nairobi. And upon waking up, she found herself in a new place and she later realized it was Nairobi and then looked for a phone and called her mother who was surprised hearing her daughter having searched for her but she was nowhere to be found. Someone lent me a phone and I talked to my mother who said they searched for me from every place they could think of and even went to police, but all in vain. They had started losing hope, thinking that I was no more. So I told my mother all what had happened to me and how I found myself in Nairobi. I told her everything and she sent a cousin who came, picked me and took me home. So I took the number and crammed it. So when I came back, I gave my mom the number. And we tried calling the person. During a week she had spent with those three men, she had crammed a phone number of one of the three men. And upon reaching at home, she reported everything to police, submitted that number, and that man was called and put in custody. When he came, that is when he was arrested. One of those men were taken to court, and the whole process took three months. And it could be difficult for me to attend all hearings regularly since I was a student. So, and during my examination period, I could always not be available. They jailed me for two months in those three months until when I fully gave my testimony and I was released. Because I've been sold. She says she's been through a difficult life from a complicated childhood to a poor life as she grew in difficult life conditions plus being an orphan as she lost the dad at a young age. Those are factors that contributed to a life that she does not want any other person to experience the hell of a life she went through. Doreen is still doing her high school studies and looks forward to a better life. But life here is difficult as she lacks many of her daily needs, including food, clothes, and has no better place to sleep. And she's here asking any good Samaritan out there to support her. The situation is uh, quite tough. If I think of what I went through, I lose hope. I had forced labor. I was sold by my aunt. All that makes me think that my life is doomed. My life has never been fair. Uh, life isn't easy because at the moment, I'm a mother of two. And I need to juggle between studying and raising my kids. It's not an easy task to someone like her who does not have a job. However, the 29-year-old is committed to doing whatever it takes, raise, feed, provide for her children and also study and even graduate. With that being said, she thanks a good Samaritan who helps her study. That is the one who pays her tuition. She can't mention the person for their security reason, but grateful that she at least has someone who cares. And I want to take that opportunity to thank that person. The mother of two says a lot is needed since her mother is now a widow and has nothing to do, yet she is the one who kept taking care of them and says that with the availability of enough money, they can open a small business that would help improve the standards of living. But when, I'm, when I finish my studies, I want to get something to do, something that can support both my kids and I. Contribute on the Giving Life's link, phone in description and pin in top comments so as to help them survive. Thank you for watching. I'm Elijah and this is Afrimax English. Remember to subscribe.